I'm going to look at these paints this morning. This is a new set of paints that I've just received. Um, I've been using Kurataki Starry Colours. This one here for my um, golds and silvers. But uh, as you can see, I'm coming to the end. I, I never used this colour very much. Didn't seem to have much use, but these are getting very worn out and especially this one, which is my favorite. So I, th and this one's almost gone, that's the silver, but it's not, it's not silver, it's white gold and it never really gave a very intense silver. So I thought next time round, I would try the Fine Tech, the Coliro Fine Tech ones, which are easily available on Amazon. So when you get a new set of paints, of course, obviously you want to try them all out and I haven't tried these out yet. So um, you're gonna be here with me for the trying and I'm just going to squirt on some water and we'll leave that then for a minute or two while I talk about the paper I'm going to use. Um, you always need to uh, moisten the paint so that they begin to release themselves a little bit. When you, when, you know, when you're mixing up your paint uh, before you use it and you're just mixing, a good tip is to not use one of your best brushes because eventually that will wear down the nice point that you might have had at the beginning. And um, so use an older brush, one that's not quite so important to you. And um, yeah, then that way you'll save your points. Because if there's one thing that's really, I think, made a big difference for me over the years, it's having a, a good point to your brush. And a lot of brushes actually, even expensive ones, quite a lot of them, they don't have points. And that's, that's because, you know, in a way they're not really meant for that kind of painting. So, but if you have a brush with a nice point, like these ones, that's a beautiful point, even on a bigger one. It's still got a really nice point when it's damp. You see that? And um, that really helps. So right, that's quite moistened up now, so that should work reasonably well. And I'm going to do something I haven't done for ages, which is I'm going to paint on coloured paper. This is um, this is called Clairefontaine Paint On Mixed Media Paper. It comes in these different colours here. They sent me this sample pack. I don't have any affiliation with them particularly other than through Amazon. And uh, I haven't used this yet. This is a piece of, obviously, black. And I thought it might be quite nice to try it out um, with these gold paints. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some Christmas trees. Uh, I might need that. This I find is useful. This is called a Spontex sponge. And um, I usually have one of those handy. They last forever and it works better, I find, than paper towel. Of course, I do have paper towel as well in my trusty IKEA holder. And um, that's useful if you make a mistake. When you, um, there's been a bit of a thing going around at the moment about dabbing paint off of paper uh, with paper towel in order to create a certain effect. And yes, you can do that, but remember that that's actually generally used to correct a mistake. So it's not something that you're necessarily going to want to focus on learning. Anyway, so let's try these out, shall we? Um, let us begin with, this is sort of like my warm up, I suppose. I'm going to do some not, per not very realistic Christmas trees. How does that sound? Now, I don't know whether this is going to paint well or not. But let's see. That seems like a good start. Maybe we we'll do a few in that colour, shall we? Um, and do them in rows, I think, or something like rows. Oh yes, well, this is very nice. Let's do another one down here. Uh, what should we do? Well, 
Well, the first impression here is very, very good. I like that. Paints really nicely, even sort of fairly fine lines. And we'll do another one down here, shall we? Um, that's a test, doing little circles. Okay, well, 10 out of 10 to Fine Tech for their beautiful um, iridescent colors. Okay, so let's start one here, shall we? Um, how else can I draw a Christmas tree? Uh, let's do the trunk first. This is, this is good. I'm enjoying this. Let's put the trunk in first. This paper is lovely as well. This one I was using, wasn't it? There must be thousands of different ways of doing Christmas trees. I think I might do another one of these with lines going across. Just do a triangle. This is a good, um, what would you say, a uh, imagination stimulating activity, trying to make you think of different things to do. I'm not good at imagining things, as I have said before. And uh, so this is a good test for me to try to think of ways to paint, paint a Christmas tree. Um, that's another one, and put one of those up here, perhaps. Maybe some of them can have little pots. Let's just do one that's kind of floofy. And I might do another silver one over here, perhaps. Um, I don't know what the weather's like where you are, but here we've got a stormy week ahead of us 
We're expecting quite a bit of rain and wind. So I'm trying this one at the end here. I don't know what these colors are all called. Let's try this one. Let's do some dots up here, perhaps. Well, I must say, I'm very excited by these colors. I think they're going to be absolutely fantastic to use for all sorts of things. Uh, embellishing, and I think you could probably write with it. It seems to be fairly, um, what's the word? Liquidy, sort of inky almost. I wanted to try this out using, you know, being fairly delicate and finickety with it to see how easily it would be um, amenable to oh, I think I've tried that out enough now try doing one that's a bit more, you know. Ooh, that's very bright silver. That wasn't the one I had in my brush, I had that one. I guess they probably met, mix quite fine, uh, quite fine, what do I mean, quite easily. So I'm back from lunch and we're going to carry on now with our Christmas tree design, trying out all sorts of different ways. And of course you could do these much bigger, nothing to stop you from making them as big as you like. Um, I'm just practicing and trying to, trying to and probably failing to stretch my imagination a little bit further. Trying, trying. put a little bit more water on here because it has dried up since we started with the activation initiation ceremony. Uh, okay, I've got this one started. Um, let's put a small one here. we haven't left ourselves very much space. And down here, let's try another one like that. This is the sort I've never, never actually done this kind of squiggle before. For a tree, it's always the first time though, isn't there? I suppose 
we could put another one up here. Let's, let's have a stem, not a stem. A trunk, like that maybe. Went a bit offline here, didn't I? And there like that perhaps. I'm thinking about silver. Um, let's put another little baby one up here. And maybe the silver gold or whatever they call it. Platinum, is it? Maybe. Uh, I think I could probably fit another row in here too. others that need correction. I don't think that'll do. I think maybe put pots on these ones just to bring them down a little bit. You could do some um, silver and gold stars on there too if you wanted to. I don't know if that would improve the overall effect but we could. Let's see. some of the gaps maybe. do some spatter. Let me find my paintbrush and uh, how about some silver spatter and maybe some gold. Quite sure how that's going to dry. It might dry a lot lighter than it looks but we'll see. So you could use a design like this for a placemat. You could um, do a design something like this and then get them printed out and or print them out yourself and turn them into table mats for the place setting for Christmas Day, couldn't you? Or you could make wrapping paper like that as well. Could do all sorts of things. It looks quite festive, doesn't it? <laughs> 